Chang, and welcome to the IMAG Integrating Machine Learning with Multiscale Modeling pre-meeting webinar series. And today's talk will be given by Dr. Theo Retkesinas, Shannon Peters, and Maran Livney. And I will pass the presenter's role to them. Um, you're welcome to take it away. Okay, thank you, uh, Grace, and thanks everybody for uh, taking a few minutes to hear what we're working on as part of a, a DARPA-supported uh, project that's really trying to build an AI platform for knowledge extraction uh, from scientific publications. So I'm Shannon Peters. Uh, I'm a geoscientist uh, with a, a domain requirement that we better leverage scientific publications. Theo Rekatsinas, who you'll hear from in the second part of the talk, is a computer scientist. And Marone Livney, unfortunately, is stuck in an airport uh, today and not able to uh, join us, but he's in Computer Science uh, Center for High Throughput, Throughput Computing. Okay, so the, the big motivation for this project and is really to take better advantage of data and information that's currently uh, disseminated in scientific publication reports as sort of the central point uh, in the scientific process. Field observations, field data, some of that ends up in collections. A good fraction of that ends up uh, really outlet in primary form in the published scientific literature. Deployed instruments uh, and laboratory instruments generate large volumes, increasingly large volumes of data. A large fraction of that ends up in stru uh, structured data repositories and then derive products from that end up in the scientific literature. Scientific models encapsulate much of our understanding of the natural world and themselves get described in the scientific literature as well as output from models. And so we're generating a, a large volume of information that's locked up in, in scientific publications and reports that we consume as individuals. Uh, and in some cases, we require to, to build additional synthetic data sets that can enable new types of science. Uh, and, and the gap between our ability to uh, take advantage of the scientific literature and our need to do so is getting bigger and bigger and bigger every day. Uh, a large fraction of the world's data is ending up in unstructured, data resources like scientific publications. And of course, the rate of scientific publication is going up. It's, it's more than a full-time job simply to keep pace with the published literature in many scientific disciplines. And so we need automated knowledge extraction uh, mechanisms to really help us uh, move science forward in many areas productively. So what we're gonna do today is uh, describe um, uh, XDD and Cosmos, which is an end-to-end -end stack that's really designed to accelerate scientific discovery. It has other applications as well, but we're going to be focusing on the scientific discovery uh, part today. And it really has three, uh, three components currently. There's the digital library layer, a high-throughput computing layer, and then an AI technical assistant ecosystem sitting on top of that uh, data pipeline. And we'll, we'll walk through each of these. And of course, uh, if anybody's interested, our contact information is there. Uh, and some online resources are available as well. Okay, so let's start off with uh, the, the path we're going to take here in the next 25 minutes or so. Uh, we'll start off with an overview of XDD, which is this foundational component. It's basically a digital library and computing system. That's really a requirement if we're going to use the scientific literature. Next, we'll go over Cosmos and knowledge extraction uh, as a service platform, and then we'll give you a, a demo. So let's launch uh, right into XDD. Simply put, uh, XDD, formerly known as GeoDeepDive in uh, recognition of an NSF EarthCube uh, initiation of this project, it's, it's really just 11 million documents that are coupled to a high-throughput computing infrastructure that can actually read them in an ongoing, repeatable, uh, scalable uh, fashion. And at the end of the day, this is really the foundation for any system that uh, uh, needs to extract information from the scientific literature. So what I'm going to do is give you an overview of what this uh, system does and some of its current capabilities that you can tap into uh, right now, actually. So XDD uh, is really uh, built on a foundation that is uh, grounded in agreements with uh, publisher uh, contracts and campus level agreements that give us unique permissions uh, that allow us to collaborate with external non-UW uh, collaborators and teams, for example. Uh, but that also allows to do uh, some pretty unique things. And one of those things, of course, is uh, access online uh, distributed content. Now, what these agreements allow us to do that is particularly unique is that we're able to automate the process 
of fetching and downloading these documents, that alone is unique, but also to store uh, on our local servers, on secured internal storage, uh, the original content as provided by the content providers. Um, and this is a very important requirement because we are not trying to solve one, one problem in this space. We are trying to establish a platform for solving many problems in this space. And that requires going back to the original content over and over again and deploying new tools and methods on top of it. Our automated mechanism currently harvests something like 10,000, 15,000, depending on the particulars of the day, original content providers. You'll see down there on the lower left some boxes that look like maybe a PowerPoint mistake or something with images. Those question marks are meant to indicate that we are constantly in the process of renegotiating new agreements with new publishers, uh, and we expect to have more coming online uh, all the time. Once we have downloaded and stored original content from publishers, uh, we have, of course, the high throughput computing capacity to deploy tools across 11 million documents quickly uh, and generate a bunch of sort of first order data products that can be, uh, come input to a variety of different things. So this includes services like producing a harmonized reference metadata database, which actually has a fair bit of value in itself, uh, tools to uh, process the PDFs themselves, deploy off the shelf OCR and uh, language processing tools uh, and so on. The output of that is uh, our structured derivations of the, of the data set that we can use uh, and deploy right away. And that is ultimately the foundation that we'll hear about for uh, Cosmos next. So just to give you a sense of some of the capabilities that are kind of unique that we can do with XDD right away that are sort of a starting point uh, for building more complex applications is to start with something like a curated list of terms and vocabularies that a domain uh, science might have. So here are just some examples from my own area. The paleobiology database, a community database resource manually constructed and curated, something like 350,000 taxonomic names, mineral names and mineral database similarly curated and so on. And this is a very common starting point and it's not really practical to go out and ask the question, well, what is the literature footprint of these databases based on these uh, key terms, for example. But with XDD, we can supply full text content of documents and the capacity to automatically index very large vocabularies across that full text and generate results uh, on the fly as documents are produced in every day and incorporated into the infrastructure. What we get out of that actually right away has some pretty high value. We've indexed in scientific literature against existing domain knowledge bases that themselves have value. Uh, and then when we intersect them, for example, we can see how different vocabularies from different resources uh, actually identify a document as uh, containing all of them. Uh, this has some utility. We can take a very large footprint like taxonomic names, hundreds of thousands of taxonomic names, and get instant summaries of the number of times individual taxonomic uh, names occur within the scientific literature. This can be useful for some aggregation steps. Uh, in addition to sort of general summaries, we can actually get uh, individual mentions of uh, these terms within the full text exposed uh, via an API designed uh, to be an input to more advanced uh, user applications. But here we can see how individual uh, mentions of this particular taxon occur in the literature and one click will take us to the original PDF uh, if we need it. And this API functionality is live online right now and it's actually being deployed in a couple of different ways. So this is that paleobiology database again. And here's a taxonomic name, and this is the footprint of that taxonomic name in the literature, and users are able to see other taxonomic names that occur in that paper, examples of it, the instance of that name, uh, and so on. And so things like this being uh, able to be incorporated into existing knowledge bases and existing domain uh, applications actually has some utility uh, right out of the box in, in XDD. But of course, what we're really trying to accomplish uh, with XDD is a little bit uh, more sophisticated than uh, that, but this is the foundation uh, upon which all additional capacity is built and it's sort of abstracted away and we can get on with more interesting problems. Automated, principled access to documents from new and archival sources, growing every day in pace with the literature and a high throughput computing system that allows us uh, to do interesting uh, things. And so what we'll do next uh, after the break is walk you through Cosmos, which is really sitting on top of this and designed to take it to the next level uh, and exposing and aggregating information from the scientific literature. And we'll stop there.